And we're back on Speak Your Mind. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My guest, Karen Walsh, and uh, giving us uh, nice tips on, uh, you know, how to overcome the negative thoughts with positive, which is very important. And, uh, well, Karen, we actually have a caller on the line, and uh, maybe she wants to say something. You, you might like to put the headphones on so you can hear what she has to say. This is uh, Kat of Nandi. Hello. Oh, Bula. Bula Vinaka. So, uh, yes, do share with us uh, what uh, you want to say, Catherine. Well, Karen, when you get depressed, how do you get your mojo? You know, your mojo, your um, up, and, up and go going. Yeah, I think it's a good question, Catherine. Uh, the reason why I say that is because it's very difficult to get positive and optimistic if you're struggling, let's say, with clinical depression. So clinical depression is a disorder which generally is treated with medication. Um, and it's if you don't have the medication and if you are clinically depressed, which some of us are, and often it's a pre-genetic factor, it's very difficult to find your mojo when you're struggling with that all the time. And if you do get the medication and you're able to then take that medication regularly, then you'll find that generally the depression eases off and your moods tend to be a little bit more consistent. When you've got that, it's more easy to be able to think in a more positive way. However, if you've got depression that's not a clinical depression, it's just that life is difficult for you and at times you really find it hard to get up, I think the important thing is to ask yourself, what is it that's going on in my life? So what is causing that sense of lowness for me? What is causing that depression? I'm a very believer, a very big believer, Catherine, in it's very difficult to solve something unless we understand it. Only when we understand it, I believe, in all my years of doing the work I'm doing, can we do something about it. So, for example, if you say to yourself, if I say to myself, well, I'm really fat, right? I'm really overweight. And I say, well, I don't know why I'm overweight, but I'm just going to keep on doing what I'm doing, although it makes me so miserable. If I take a step back and say, okay, I need to watch my diet, I need to increase my exercise, I need to watch my sleep. And if you're able to do that and then you see some results, then generally you start feeling more in control, more in, you know, powerful around what you're doing. So even well, my... I'm, uh, sorry to interrupt, but I'm, I'm actually very skinny. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it could be anything else. I mean, the question is, why is it that you get low? What is that depression about? Is it lifestyle? Oh, I had two strokes. Yeah. Two high blood pressure. So it's medical and, issues. And um, minor strokes. Yeah. I, could, I had double vision for a couple of weeks, so you can't see, as you know. Yeah. And um, I couldn't walk properly. So it's been a really and difficult... Right, but I, I, I've tried Prozac yep. years ago in New Zealand, and I tried... Um, is it Arapax? Yes, Arapax. It's an SSRI. Yeah, yep. they were giving them away free. I think the doctors were, uh, you know, just giving them to hand uh, out. How long were you and, on them for, Catherine? Oh... Three days. I just, I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. It just. They made me feel really weird, and I, um, I probably drink too much vodka. Okay, vodka well, and not, uh, vodka not, and, not and tablets serious, like that don't but, go well. Just a quick thing, um, and I appreciate that I'm under time here. But if you are going to be on uh, medication like that, it generally takes two weeks to kick in. So if you're on it for three days, even though you might have felt a bit weird. I'm not suggesting those were the ones to continue with. You could have changed brand, but don't give up. Two, three days is not enough for you to feel the effects of that. Um, but, yeah, really, but, you know, I felt wonky, you know. Yeah. Felt, you know, strange. You overcome mm. that, though. But um, I think look at other things that bring you joy in your life and try and try and do more of those things, grandchildren, children, friends, mm. and try and bring yourself I've out of that. I've got no family here. Oh, that makes oh, it harder. Oh, okay, Catherine. Well, I hope uh, that uh, yeah. Karen's um, helping you yeah. out. Okay. You know, Thank you good. very much. Thank you very much. You're welcome, you, Catherine. Um, All right. So uh, that's, yep, that's Catherine for us. And uh, thank you very much, Karen, for giving her a piece of advice because sometimes it feels like, uh, you know, when you're just stuck in a hole and you mm. can't get out. But you need to find that power within you. Yes, very often, if we can. Or, yeah, if or we can, because sometimes it's so hard. It eh? is. But often it's other people around us who love us, who can help us. Yes. And it doesn't necessarily mean people who are family, could be friends, could be people at work who care for us. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there's a lot of help generally around many people that sometimes we don't look at in the moment of our distress or our stress or our difficulty. Yes, because, um, in me, I mean, loneliness as well has mm. a big part, I believe, to, um, you know, getting depressed. 
I think it's a really important point. You know what's really interesting, Louise, is I can see people who are surrounded by villagers. Everybody knows them and they've got everybody around them and yet mm -hmm. they feel so lonely. Okay. And, I, you know, often people say to me, why is that? And I always say, I think it's the power and the connection. Mm -hmm. If you've got a woman who's not feeling connected to people around her, even though there's lots of them, yes. then I feel often we feel both alone and lonely. Mm -hmm. So it's about trying to re-engage with the connection so that we feel as if we're part of something. You know, human beings are animals in, and we live in social groups. Like yes. monkeys, with respect, okay. and monkeys live in groups. Monkeys will never be alone. Mm -hmm. So that if we, we if we taken away from the people that actually keep us going mm -hmm. and to whom we feel connected, then we're going to feel alone and lonely, which ultimately can then affect our health, our depression, mm -hmm. our mood, mm -hmm. you know, anxiety, mm -hmm. and just general outlook on life. Yeah, I mean, it's all about um, just I think just being positive. You know, I mean, even if uh, you are lonely. Don't, Sometimes don't easier me, than don't, yeah, yeah, it's always <laughs> easier, easier said, said than said done. And done. That's true. <laughs> but anyway, we'll go to the resilience. You know yes. how? What does it mean? Like uh, I said earlier, before we went to the break, becoming a resilient woman. You know, being faced with a terrible, just say for example, a terrible relationship. You know, being stuck in a relationship for probably say ten years, and the man dumps you and your children. So maybe give us some advice on how to get out of that. Okay, first first question was what was resilience? Well, resilience okay. is essentially the definition is the ability to recover, to come back after a life, you know, difficulty. Mm -hmm. So essentially the definition is resilience is the ability to bounce back. I like the definition that resilience is the ability to bounce forward. Mm -hmm. And I think it, essentially what it is is that there's a lot of, you know, issues that we all face in life. I haven't yet met, you know, met somebody with a perfect life. Mm. But there's been a lot of research on things like tsunamis, world wars, hurricanes. And the whole focus has been on what makes resilient people, what makes resilient communities. Mm -hmm. And I often believe, and in fact, I'll stay this until the day I die, resilience is about our ability to think in a positive way. And I always say, and I'm saying this to viewers and listeners, mm -hmm. when we have life difficulties, I want you to say, I want you to ask yourself four words. How can I recover? That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you might struggle for a little bit. So if he's left you for another woman with the children, mm -hmm. of course, it's agonizingly painful. Why wouldn't it be? You know, you had your hopes on this person. You were going to stay with them until we got old and, and grandparents mm -hmm. together. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you are a worthy woman. You're a beautiful woman. You've got so much going for you. Mm -hmm. It might take you a while to recover. Mm -hmm. It might take you a while to come back. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, remember that there's nothing that you can't do if you truly want to do it. Remember that you've got people around you to support you and who love you. Mm -hmm. And if you truly want to do it, mm -hmm. you get out there and you recover because you deserve to. Yes. I mean, we, it, it, it takes a lot. Like you said, it's uh, much easier said than done. But you have to find that power to change your life. On Gold FM, this is Speak Your Mind. We'll be back in a moment. Mm -hmm.